Coronavirus means we are talking about race, ethnicity and health. One of the most striking studies that I've reported on during the pandemic looked at more than 35,000 people who were treated in hospital with COVID in the UK. It showed people from South Asian backgrounds were 20% more likely to die and were a massive 12 years younger than their white counterparts. But getting a complete explanation of why black, Asian and minority ethnic groups are at higher risk is really complicated. It's a combination of who's most exposed to the virus and who's most at risk after being infected. A report by the group Independent Sage concluded it was a complex mix of deprivation, poor health and racial inequality. Dr Rohin Francis is a cardiologist, researcher and makes the Medlife Crisis podcast. Certainly, if you just look at the end figures, you know, there appears to be a significantly higher chance of dying for people from black and Asian and minority ethnic backgrounds from COVID-19 in comparison to the white population. So it almost seems common sense to think that there is something biological going on, that the virus is affecting people like that in a different way. But there's many, many factors that lead up to that. So The SAGE publication from last week attempted to remove some of those factors from the equation. So if you take two comparable people, say 60 years old, one who is a black person, one who is white, then if they are matched in terms of their medical history and their social factors, then actually their outcomes from COVID-19 are comparable. We're not seeing a difference if you take those factors out of the equation. And what are those factors? So the first major reason we're seeing a big difference is people from BAME backgrounds are more likely to get the virus in the first place. And that's completely unrelated to any biological property of the person themselves. It's it's more to do with the kind of jobs they're doing. So they're more likely to work with public facing jobs like being bus drivers, taxi drivers, working in care homes or as nurses. They may be more likely to live in a household with more individuals in it, particularly if more than one person in the household works in the healthcare sector, which is very common in South Asian, African, Filipino families. And then other factors like diet is clearly very important for things like developing diabetes and heart failure. And then in reality, if you take an average person from the black community in the UK compared to someone who is white, on average, their health status won't be similar. Someone who is black or from South Asian background, for example, on average, obviously there are exceptions to all of this, will have more comorbidities, more sort of medical problems at a given stage in their life, again, due to those social factors. In terms of explaining why there is a higher risk of dying, it comes down to two broad camps, surely, kind of like the higher risk of being exposed to the virus in the first place. And then also, once you've been exposed, are you then more likely to die from an infection? So is is it both? Is it one more than the other? Where does the balance lie? I'm not sure that anybody's teased out which is more important of those two. But yes, it is both. If one looks at hospitalised patients, so patients who are sick enough to be admitted to hospital, which we know is the minority of people who get COVID-19, then the main discriminator between who does well and who doesn't is still age. But there did seem to be a signal coming from what racial group the patient belonged to. But then if you look into that in a bit more detail, we're seeing that there is a higher degree of comorbidities within people from black and minority ethnic backgrounds being admitted to hospital, and hence they were having slightly worse outcomes. If you take that out of the equation, which was the intention of the uh, SAGE publication last week, then actually we're not seeing any difference. So when somebody gets to the level of sickness to be admitted to hospital, if you take into account their medical history, then there's no difference between racial groups. I remember covering uh, that study when it first came out and it's showing a massively high rate of diabetes as being one of the, the big factors in why there were differences between ethnic groups. Yes. So, you know, diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure are all conditions where we've seen exactly the same pattern long before we'd even heard of coronavirus. So I'm pleased that people are paying attention to this now, but it's a little bit disappointing that it has taken a global pandemic for some of these vast differences in, in health outcomes between different populations to be highlighted. But it really is the same picture that we've seen before.
So I know it's very tempting and it's something that is drummed into our heads at medical school that to think of race as a useful biological category, as, as something akin to age or sex that is particularly pertinent to somebody's medical history. But in reality, it's a social concept. It doesn't have any genetic or biological component. And so to try and use that as a reason to explain the difference, I think, is looking at things in the wrong way. This gets into a slightly difficult territory, though, doesn't it? Because even in the newspapers today, there are doctors talking about the risks in Asian populations, talking about higher genetic susceptibilities to things like diabetes and cardiovascular disease, which may be putting them at high risk of coronavirus. The genetic debate is still there, isn't it? It is. And I'm, I'm certainly not suggesting there's nothing to do with genetics here, but it's too simplistic to think about this in terms of race. Because, you know, the racial categories we use, from a scientific point of view, they're completely useless. You know, if we consider the word black, that comprises everybody from the African continent where we know, and this is a categorical fact from the Human Genome Project, that there's more diversity genetically within Africa than the rest of the world combined. Yet we're treating that all as one monolithic group of people with the same health needs. You know, nowhere is it demonstrated more clearly than when calculating kidney function using blood tests or starting anti-high blood pressure medication. We are told in our guidelines, you know, this is, this is clearly written, that black people will start on a different medication or they will have a different blood test result just based on a, a numerical conversion. So this sort of solidifies the idea that there is a fundamental genetic difference between the races. So to come back to your point about whether genetics is important at all, of course, we do see certain polymorphisms, some genetic variations that are more prevalent in certain geographic distributions. But this is a far more nuanced approach than race. You know, we may see in a very small geographic location uh, a tendency for a certain medical condition, but that doesn't mean that you can extrapolate it to South Asian or black, because those are just too broad and too vague to be of any use. But these are terms that appear in official government documents, and some doctors will say that they find them like a useful shorthand or, or a proxy for getting to some of these issues. Yes, when presenting a patient to another colleague, we'll say age, sex and race, and try and you know focus our thinking. And while age and sex are very important factors, race doesn't offer that same usefulness. If you wanted to replace that with, say, occupation, then I think that would be more useful. And moving towards understanding someone's social situation and their diet, you know, all of these additional social and uh, cultural factors which contribute to health. So when people say that they're using race as a shortcut or a proxy, it doesn't really even help because the outcomes we think we're trying to improve by doing that are poorly correlated with race. And in fact, what we could be doing is stereotyping our patient in front of us and narrowing our view of what could be going on with them based on something that isn't really that relevant. How would you like to see medicine and the NHS tackle this issue? We should be paying more attention to our patients' social circumstances rather than their ethnic background. Certainly from the medical community's perspective, I think we need to stop thinking about it like a, a clear biological property and to start with by revisiting some of these guidelines that I referred to earlier, sort of uh, blood pressure and kidney function and look back at the data, which I've been trying to do myself and finding that there really isn't much to back them up. Dr. Rohan Francis.